Welcome to CoreCoding today for July 26, 2019. This is the show where I give you a quick look at some of the biggest stories happening in the world of core cutting right now and give you my opinion on them. Now, this is my opinion. If you want to learn more about these stories in the show notes down below, I'll put a link to each story. You can rebound for yourself. Come up with your own opinions. I'd love to hear from you. If you're new here, hey, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up. We'll really appreciate it because it lets Google and YouTube know you enjoy what we're doing. And hopefully we can help you break free from the high cost cable TV and still watch the shows you enjoy. Well, there's been a lot of news happening in the past 24 hours, but first a quick deal. Right now, if you buy two Roku premieres, the 4K HDR, the real budget in 4K HDR player from Roku, they're on sale for $33.99 each when you buy two. This is a really great deal on these, perfect for anybody who's looking to stock up. They are not nearly as powerful and don't offer um, quite the same picture and performance as the Roku Stick Plus. If you can afford a little bit extra money, I would. But if you got a TV in the kids' room or whatever, and you're looking for a cheap Roku, hey, for $33.99, that's a pretty good deal. So uh, I'll put a link to that in the show notes. Using that link does help Core Cars News through um, Amazon's affiliate program, so we will appreciate it. All right, let's get into the news because we got a lot to cover here and not a lot of time to do it. So let's get into it. Right off the bat, um, Spectrum, Charter, I know that a lot of people are like, well, it's actually called Charter. Yeah, but they were on under Spectrum. Spectrum lost 144,000 TV subscribers in the second quarter of 2019. This is more than double the rate of loss that they had from this time last year. Once again, points to the fact that Core cutting is growing faster than ever, so it'll be very interesting. Um, Spectrum did is down slightly from the first quarter when Spectrum lost 145,000 subscribers in the first quarter of 2019. Now, Spectrum did grow their wireless market. Spectrum and Comcast and everybody else has been rushing to find ways to diversify. Spectrum recently moved into diversifying by offering wireless phone plans, and they added 208,000, bringing their total um, wireless customers up to 518,000 as of the end of June. So it's pretty good numbers there. Um, the overall though, core cutting is probably gonna have two plus million new core cutter members if this rate continues um, in the second quarter of 2019. We're still waiting for companies like Dish to report and so many other smaller cable companies to report too. But just Comcast, um, AT&T, and Spectrum they probably are getting close to about 1.4, 1.3 million um, uh, cancellations just in three months from those three providers. AT&T lost over a million right there where you could buy DirecTV now losses into that. So I'd love to know, did you cancel Spectrum? Why did you cancel Spectrum TV? Let me know, leave a comment, let us know what you think. So this raises one question. Um, a lot of people talked about YouTube TV and DirecTV now hey, they raised their ten, price 10 bucks, head back to cable, right? This price hike happened at the beginning of the second quarter of 2019 in April for both of them and uh, May. So it happened earlier in the, in the time. And now we know that that had no effect on the growth of core cutting. Uh, people did not rush back to cable as I think cable executives desperately pleaded and hoped they would. And many news organizations, if you remember when DirecTV now raised its price and when YouTube TV raised its price, we had a flood of news stories pushing the idea, you might as well go back to cable. Now, I don't believe the American population is stupid. I do sometimes wonder if cable companies think we're stupid with some of the promotionals they offer when you really read into them, like, that's not a deal. You make it sound like a deal, but that's not a deal. Um, but it seems like Americans have looked at it and said, hey, even with YouTube TV being higher, even with Netflix being $2 more, I'm still saving money going with cord cutting. And with the average, according to Fortune, the average cable TV bill now being $107 a month, just for TV when you add in the fees and taxes, you can see why a $50 YouTube TV bill is much more attractive than that. Because what we find is on top of that $107 is most cable subscribers also get something like Netflix, Amazon, or Hulu. Because you can't watch many of the shows. You wanna watch Stranger Things, The Handmaid's Tale? You can't do that with cable. You need to get it through a um, cord cutting service like Netflix or Hulu. So when people really say, hey, yeah, 107 for TV plus 12 bucks for Netflix plus Amazon Prime or whatever else they may have, then they say, hey, but for 50 bucks I can get YouTube and be set. And that's the big problem I have here. 
This idea that if I went back to cable, I would get everything I want, it's increasingly not true. I think that's a big part of this too. So core cutting is, even with the price hikes that everybody likes to complain about, and I get it, core cutting is on track to set a new record in the second quarter of 2019 after it set a record in the first quarter of 2019. So I'd love to know, did you cancel cable at all? Satellite, whatever it may be. Leave me a comment, let me know why. Were, are you surprised by the growth of core cutting? I'll be honest, the growth is a little bit faster than I expected. We've seen all the reports, core cutting is likely to slow down, right? Core cutting is going to slow down. Maybe uh, DirecTV Now is going to slow down because people aren't happy with the price hike and they lost subscribers in the second quarter. But that didn't drive people back to cable. It drove people to their competitors or it drove people to say, hey, live TV is not for me. So that's my second question here. Are you somebody who had a live TV service like YouTube TV, PlayStation View, DirecTV Now? Did you cancel it and go on demand only? Leave us a comment, let me know. I'll love to hear from you. All right, next up, one of the big issues with streaming and core cutting and all this is the fact that the laws covering much of this goes back to the 1992 Cable TV Act. When it comes to things like um, cable companies offering locals in certain markets, fees and all that, it goes back to 1992, the law really hasn't changed much since then. While now a bipartisan effort from both Republicans and Democrats have come up with a bill to address TV in the world of core cutting and to address the end of blackouts and TV. So part of this bill would basically give the FCC permission to force um, basically negotiations and bidding to end blackouts and more. So it's very complicated. I'm not gonna get into all of it because I've only been able to read the, the highlights of the bill, not the entire thing. But there is a lot of good here. Often though, the devil's in the details with this kind of stuff. And I, I need to read the full bill before I can say, hey, this is a good bill for core cutting or this is a bad bill for core cutting. Overall, to start the, the discussion, it does seem like core cutting um, would benefit overall from this uh, more than it would be hurt. So we'll have to keep a close eye on this. I do think it's time to update the 1992 Cable um, Act. I, I think in 1992 is about the age when I got my first computer. Now, at the old compact computer I had, I wanna say it was Windows 3.1 back then, we're not even into Windows 95 yet, and I remember um, DOS being where I spent most of my time. So it's kind of interesting to think where we were in 1992 to today. I, I remember there was the old, remember, anybody ever remember this? You would dial a phone number and it would go to your phone company and it would have like prompts. You could press number two for movie times, press number three to hear the weather, press number four to do this or that, um, you know, to an age where I get my phone out and look at it. I think this is about the time my grandpa, who uh, was a very successful businessman, got that old bag phone. If anybody remembers this, it needed to be plugged into your car. It was in a bag, had a little shoulder strap on it, and that was his car phone. Um, so we've come a long ways from then. I'd uh, love to hear it. Did you have a bag phone or one of those old car phones built into the armrest of the car? I remember when my grandpa got that, we all thought it was the coolest thing in the world. Now I'm walking around with a phone in my pocket and my six-year-old daughter wants a cell phone. So it's probably time we update this law. I'll be very interested to see what the actual bill says when I get my hands on it. Um, but I'd love to hear um, what you think. And are you surprised at all that things like Hulu with Live TV is still tied to a bill from 1992? So let me know what you think. And if you wanna read the full details of what we know about the bill, the highlights of the bill, that I was able to gleam reading it this morning, uh, in the show notes down below, I'll put a link to all of that. All right, um, AT&T Watch TV. Now, this is something I've been getting a lot of questions about. AT&T Watch TV is soon to be AT&T's fourth TV service, not to be confused with AT&T TV, which is launching quarter reports maybe next month and will be nationwide by the end of the year, according to AT&T. AT&T Watch TV launched um, a while back. It's very much like Philo. Um, has most of the channels Philo has, not all, and it has some tur Turner channels in there too. For 15 bucks a month, or free on select AT&T phone plans. It gives you a ton of live TV. No DVR though. They promised a Roku channel. That never happened, never came to Roku. And now it's kind of languishing out there and a lot of people are starting to wonder what the future of AT&T Watch TV is, understandably. During the second quarter earnings call for AT&T, they talked about DirecTV Now, they talked about um, HBO Max, they talked about the new AT&T TV live TV streaming service. 
They did not talk about watch TV, which was a major departure. Um, in the first quarter, they did give some information about the subscriber numbers and talk about it a little bit. There was no talk of AT&T watch TV subscriber or user numbers. There was no talk about the future of the service. And plans to bring it to Roku have seemingly vanished, to be honest with you. They've seemed to have changed their mind on that. So this has brought a lot of concern from our readers about the future of it. And I agree, I'm very concerned about the future of AT&T Watch TV, especially when you consider a big selling point of it is it the bundle option with AT&T Wireless. Now they're talking about HBO Max having a bundle option with AT&T Wireless. With AT&T TV coming out starting next month, it will definitely be very confusing to have AT&T TV be a live TV streaming service and AT&T Watch TV being a live TV streaming service that's completely different. So I do wonder what the future of AT&T Watch TV is because um, you know, AT&T seems to be wielding an ax to streaming services right now and they were very clear during the earnings call. HBO Max and AT&T TV is their main focus. That's where they're gonna be putting their energy and that was it. DirecTV Now, AT&T Watch TV were not listed when it came to areas they intend to put their efforts into for the rest of 2019 and 2020. So I'll let you know, do you use AT&T TV? Do you like it? Does it concern you at all that they may be dropping it? Uh, leave me a comment, let me know. I am watching it very closely. If you're using it now, my recommendation is not to worry um, because you'll probably get a fair amount of warning before it suddenly shuts off, especially if you're getting it free with your AT&T phone plan. Take advantage of that. But it doesn't seem like AT&T has interest in developing it any more than what it is now. So we'll wait and see. All right, next story up of the day. If you have an older Sony TV, pre-Android TV model, it will reportedly lose Amazon Prime Video in September of 2019. Um, I have the exact date in the post down below, but it seems like Amazon is ending support for older TVs. I also heard a report that Vizio, older Vizio TVs may be losing Amazon Prime Video. Did you get that email? Somebody told me they got an email about it. I have not been able to get my hands on that email from Vizio warning about the blackout. I will love your help. If you got the email from Vizio saying that Amazon Prime Video is leaving, send it over, go to corecardsnews.com, click on our contact us, send us an email, we'll reply back with an email address you can forward it to. That would be a huge help to us to actually get our hands on it so we can see it. And as always, if you ever have any core cutting news, maybe a deal you found, go to corecardsnews.com, link in the show, it's down below, click on contact us at the top and send us an email. We would really appreciate it. Huge help. Readers sending us deals is, and um, news stories is one of the best ways we get breaking news. All right, last story up of the day. Apple has started to roll out their Apple TV OS 13 public beta. This is a pretty significant overhaul of the look of Apple TV, a refreshed interface with um, new graphics on the home screen and more. Plus it adds some things like profiles so your kid could have a profile on Apple TV and you can have a profile and other features, including support for like Xbox and PlayStation controllers. Now the public beta is rolled out and I've heard a lot of complaints about it. Um, so there seems to be issues with crashing, severe buffering, and other um, visual errors on the home screen. So I'd love to know your experience. Um, we received a pretty good number of these complaints. I found a whole thread on Reddit of people complaining about it. But I did hear from one reader who says he has the public beta but has had no issues with it for the new Apple TV. So I'd love to hear what you think. What do you think of the Apple TV OS 13 public beta? If you don't have it, warning, be careful if you're upgrading. Um, I believe you can roll back. If you do find any bugs, Apple is saying please contact us. Remember the point of a public beta is to find bugs and report it. So take advantage of that, let Apple know what you find. But do be warned, we have heard a large number of complaints about the new public beta that basically makes your Apple TV almost unusable according to some people. And other people just say it's a very annoying experience at this point, but they're still able to watch their content. So leave me a comment, let me know, I'd love to hear from you. Um, and hopefully we can uh, help you learn more about core cutting. Now again, hey, super thank you full to everybody who has subscribed to us, 82,000 subscribers to the few, uh, I think we had almost 400 people subscribe yesterday. Welcome, if you're somebody who's joined in the last few months, I'm so happy you're here. Thank you for your support. We have more things in the works, so hang in here with us, but I do know, hey, it's the summer. 
I hope you're going to have a great weekend. If I don't see you back tomorrow, I'll see you on Monday. But be safe. Enjoy this beautiful weather. Thank you for your support. Hopefully we're helping you out as you have helped us. So take care, everybody. I will see you back here tomorrow for our weekly recap and Monday for our typical core cutting today show. Thanks, everybody. Take care.